Hello, welcome to Santuario Lunar. In this video, I'm going to present you five lessons I've learned from Goddess Aphrodite that you can also learn if you haven't learned yet, of course. If you enjoyed this video, I'm going to ask now, please give your thumbs up, subscribe my channel, share this video with your friends, and leave a comment below telling me your favorite lesson. Let's start. So, lesson number one. You are beautiful, no matter what they say. And words can't bring you down. If you haven't learned this lesson with Christina Aguilera in the song Beautiful, you can learn with Aphrodite now, or you can learn again with her. That means you are beautiful. And no matter what people say, because nobody can judge beauty exactly. So let's start with a question. What is beauty? Beauty is subjective. So, I can find something beautiful and you can find the opposite. Therefore, I can say I am beautiful. And you can say you are beautiful too, even though someone else says we are not beautiful. But, as it is subjective, we can decide. So, we must decide upon ourselves. We must consider ourselves beautiful. We must see this beauty and we must accept this beauty too because we are beautiful, just like Aphrodite. And how can Aphrodite really teach us this beauty lesson? When we see Aphrodite's depiction throughout history, mainly the history of art, we are going to see many different features, different hairs, different faces, different bodies, because the idea of beauty changes according to time and space. So, in a specific time, in a specific space, a country, for example, we have what we call beauty or beauty pattern. And in another period of time, maybe in the same space or in a different space, we can have another kind of beauty ideal or another beauty pattern. But who defines the beauty pattern for a specific time and space? That's the trick. Only the dominant classes dictate the beauty patterns because they want to put this over people so people can follow. But of course, nobody is going to reach this beauty pattern because it's virtually impossible. What is a pattern? By pattern, we understand a series of things which are ordered, they must follow a specific order and a specific structure and then behave in a pattern and then behave properly. But to define and follow a pattern, we need to obey a series of variants. And for beauty pattern, we have to have the access to the same kinds of food, to the same kind of cosmetic products, to the same kind of cosmetic surgeries, to the same kind of lifestyle and routine. Of course, we can't. So, of course, we are going to pursue this forever if we want. So, the thing is, let's forget about this beauty pattern because it's totally subjective too. And accept that beauty lies in each one of us. We are beautiful and no matter what they say. Lesson number two, love yourself. <laughs> to continue this line of thinking, love yourself above everything else because we have to love ourselves. If we don't love yourself, how the hell are you going to love somebody else? Can I get an amen here? The thing is, we are taught, depending on the religion you are born or the society you are born, that we must love a specific deity first above everything else. But this is not true, because if you don't love yourself, you can't love others. And you don't allow people to love you, because you don't know what love is to start. So start by loving yourself, just like Aphrodite does. She loves herself above everything else, and she shows this self-love all the time. So self-love is essential for having a good life. And more than this, when we love ourselves, we actually create a barrier of protection. So it's very difficult for some people to harm us with words, with thoughts, with actions. Because we love ourselves and we can endure things better. And even for psychic vampires, when we have our self-love well established, they really have to work extra to do a damage to our energy. 
they can, of course, I'm not saying it's impossible. But the low level energy vampires, they won't do any harm. But that's the thing. Self-love is essential. So love yourself, like Aphrodite does. Lesson number three, be yourself. So to end this line of thinking, you are beautiful, you love yourself, and you accept yourself for who you are. Nobody can change you. Nobody can tell you what to do, how to be, how to behave, what to think, what to enjoy, what to dislike. No, you are yourself and you must continue being yourself and accept and be happy for it, just like Aphrodite is. She doesn't care about what people are going to talk about her. She doesn't care about the things people can plot against her. She's just herself and she loves being herself. So we too, I am myself and I'm happy with this. You are yourself and you're happy with this. Lesson number four, you don't need to enter in every fight you see. <laughs> Some people enjoy taking parts of fights and quarrels, but we don't need to. Although there are important ones, we must enter, we must fight, we must break the faces of people. We have to be selective. Even if we take these entering fights or creating fights for sports or as a hobby, we have to be moderate. If you love playing soccer, for example, you can play soccer 24 hours. You have to be moderate. So that's the idea. Aphrodite, no, she enjoyed every fight and if there was enough fight she could create one and this is like a shadow aspect of this goddess so we must avoid this temptation mainly online we see today online environment mainly on facebook and twitter is like this now it's like battlefields a war zone so we have to be selective and just pick up the fights we really need to and that we are going to get something good after it because in many cases, we simply forget what we are really fighting for, just like Aphrodite. She entered so many fights that in the end, it was not worth fighting for anymore. It was just for the pleasure of fighting. And many of these fights we can get on every day, they are just distractions. If we put our energy into things that are really important, we don't waste our energy with these useless fights and quarrels. Practical example coming from Aphrodite, the best teacher. <laughs> when she fell in love with Adonis and she hid Adonis for herself with Persephone. And then Persephone fell in love with Adonis too. And Aphrodite and Persephone started a war because of him. What's the reason of this fight? Aphrodite could have any lover she wanted, anyone at any time. So why fighting for a single person? And this fight between Aphrodite and Persephone was so big that Zeus had to intervene and in the end Adonis was dead. So, like uh, all this commotion for something that you could get anytime, anywhere. And in the end, after Adonis dies, it's like, okay, he's dead so I can get another. So it's not worth fighting for everything. We must be selective. So don't enter every fight you see. Lesson number five, think about the consequences of your acts. And this is the most important lesson from Aphrodite. As a shadow aspect of this goddess, again, Aphrodite was always very impulsive and she didn't really care about the others, or about the others feelings or anything. What she wanted, she would do things to get and she didn't care for the consequences, which is bad really really bad and how can she show us this practically apart from adonis story which ended up with adonis dead we have another very important episode in aphrodite's stories which is the biggest war of all the trojan war i'm not going to enter in details if you want to learn more about this i have the video a censored video about aphrodite and i have also a video about Ares, the goddess of chaos and discord and also in the video about hera and athena i may mention it but the thing is Ares or her daughter ate 
through a golden apple among Aphrodite, Hera, and Athena. And on this apple, it was written to the most beautiful or to the fairest. There are variations. So who was supposed to get the apple? And then the discord started. In the end, a mortal was supposed to judge who would receive this apple. And all the goddesses bribed him, offering things in exchange of the decision. And Aphrodite, knowing the desires of a human, Human being, a mortal being, she offered the love of the most beautiful woman in the world, which was Ellen from Sparta. And then, of course, Paris, the judge, chose Aphrodite in exchange for the love of Helen. But Helen was married to Menelau, and then he was not happy with the decision. And he was the ruler of Sparta. So he gathered all the power he had to take Helen back from Troy. And then the Trojan War started. Thousands of lives were lost. The gods fought among themselves because some were at Sparta's side, some were at Troy's side, so it was a massive war because of an impulsive and selfish action. Of course, we had the hands of Ares behind, but if Aphrodite hadn't offered something so dangerous, she could have avoided this war. And in the end, she didn't care for the war. So that's the lesson. We must not act on impulse. We must not act with selfishness in mind. We must think about the others. We must have empathy and then balance our decisions to have actions that will not cause harm for people around us. So this is the video with the five lessons I've learned from Aphrodite. Which one was your favorite? Please leave a comment below and tell me another lesson you've learned from her too. Remembering, if you enjoyed this video, give your thumbs up, share this video with your friend, subscribe to the channel, visit my coffee page for freebies there, free PDFs and other things, and also for purchasing an individual tarot reading. And that's it. Thank you so much. And if you're still here, why don't you stay a bit longer on the channel? Here you'll find a playlist with all these five lessons I've learned from a specific goddess. Here a playlist with all the goddesses I've talked about. Here a playlist with spells and witchcraft studies. And here you subscribe to the channel for more. Thank you.